Hey guys, Chris, Ironhead Garage. Oh, I'm still working on these brakes. So the original 55 Chevy brake lines ran on the passenger side. So I want to keep mine on the driver's side. Try to weasel up under here. So the original one, brake line, the rubber line, this guy here, it would go there into that hole. Then it had a bracket right here. So I'm going to probably cut them off. And I'll cut that one off. So I made a bracket for here. My, uh, my, uh, my rubber line here, it's got a hole in it. So I made the same size hole so I can bolt it to it. And this rear end, I'm going to put it roughly right here. And this is kind of slope. So if I cut that square, it would have been leaning. So I cut an angle on it, if you can see it. So now it'll be, it'll be plumb. That light shining through there. Yeah, so I'm going to grind a little spot on the top of this housing. And weld this tab on there. So that'll hold that part of the line. Then over here, I made a bracket. Just like the stock one on the passenger side. Mine's out of 3 16th. I think that's out of, well, almost 8th inch or something. But I'm going to weld this guy. Right there. So I'm going to clean my frame off and get to some bare metal. I know I painted it already, but eh, I'm going to touch it up. A couple spots I need to touch up. I'll have to paint this graphene anyway. So I'm going to grind that smooth there. And then this line here. I can do this with one hand. Got a little clip. It snaps in there and keeps that locked on there. So that line will go there, and then the other end's going to go and hook onto that housing. Then I can run my hard line, I was looking at this, I can run my hard line, it'll come off of that uh, fitting, and I'll come up here on top of the frame, and sneak through the floor pan there, and then I'll run it down onto the frame, and then the same way down there, and we'll put a bunch of little uh, fasteners on there has holes through here, but I don't want that brake line rubbing around those holes. I've seen some guys, they cut them, cut their body mounts here, so they can run their brake line along there, but I'm going to try to keep it up higher, snake it up there, and we'll go all the way through the front of that uh, proportioning valve down there. So, I'm going to get this frame cleaned up, ground smooth, back the metal on a couple little spots. <clears throat> In the top of this rear end, and we're we'll getting them brackets welded on there. All right, guys, we'll get on it. Well, I got them brackets welded on. There's that guy there. Yeah, I just cleaned it up. Got it welded on each side. Plenty strong. Probably overdid it. And I got that bracket there welded. Yeah, came out pretty good. So I'm gonna squirt some paint on these, and uh, I'm gonna probably cut them other ones off on that other side, on the passenger side. So we'll do that. We'll test that brake line out. All right, guys. Hey guys. Well, I'm up underneath the car. I got that uh, that rubber rear line on there. I got it bolted on there and I did get the tabs painted. And I got that bracket all painted up. And I do got the clip that goes on the back side of this that holds that on there. And look at that, I got some copper brake line running. So down here I got it all the way going up on top of the, the body mounts there and sneaking through there. Making sure it ain't going to rub anywhere. Grab this flashlight. So I got it going up the to the proportioning valve. 
And then I got these little, uh, I think they're Earl, Earl clamps. I got them there. If you can see them. See that one there. So I just tap that hole. Using this little T-handle tap. Then I got some nice little uh, stainless steel button head Allen bolts with little baby lock washers. So those will never uh, come loose. I got that one there bolted and it comes up over the cross member. Making sure it don't hit nothing and there's plenty of clearance through here. I'll make sure it's centered in there and, and don't uh, rub around. I might have to buy a few more of these clamps. I only got 10 of them. I should have bought two packs. But yeah, look at that. Brake line's going through the back. I got that, uh, that Titan flaring tool. I flared that top one. Then I'm going to get under here and uh, once I get this lashed on the frame down here and get that right bent, I'll cut it for length. And then I'm going to flare that in. I'll probably show uh, flaring one of them or so. Maybe when I get up top when it's a little easier. But yeah, going to have some breaks. Well, one day. All right, guys. I'm going to get back to tapping this and uh, hooking this brake line onto the frame. I'll be back. Well, guys, I got that clip on there, and I got that in flared. Flared it underneath the car. Man, that tool, that Titan 316 flaring tool, I can't say enough about it. That tool was, makes it so much easier. So now we got brake line all the way down. She's nice and sturdy. So, we got brake line from the proportioning valve to the rear end. Well, now I got to build this uh, rear end line now over to each drum. I'm going to get on that. She's coming along, boys. Hey, guys, I'm back. Yeah, I'm watching the old NHRA top fuel dragsters. Yeah, pretty cool. So, I've been over here. Uh, Underneath here, working on this brake line. I got one side done. Check it out. So I got the driver's side coming off the the T there done. I bought this uh, gravel guard. It's called. It's like the stock ones come. It's just a spring. It goes over that uh, 3 16 line. Get it bent right. And then uh, put your ends on there. Get that gravel guard on there and flare it up. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna do that passenger side on over there. Yeah, we'll have the back brakes done. All right, I'm back on. Guys, check out the boogeyman, Chris Dunn. Man, getting with it. Yeah, he's got a badass Nova racing the snake bike. Boogeyman, check him out on YouTube. Chris Dunn, he's got a killer old Nova. So, been working on this line still on the back. There we go, we got that other uh, passenger side brake line done. Nice bend up there. Got the stainless steel gravel guard on it, got it hooked up in the clamp. And over to the T. Yep, over here, I don't know if the stock 55 Chevy, they got a little a little like clamp up here this line just a little bouncy I think I'm gonna make me a give me a piece of sheet metal or something and uh, make me a clamp around here just to hold this line from ever bouncing around but the rest of it's sturdy and that one's got that clamp there so that's nice and sturdy so we got brake lines to the back of the rear end Yep, looking pretty good under there. So I just got to I'm gonna hook this uh, proportioning valve up to the master cylinder now. So it's the rear brakes, the bigger reservoirs, the front brakes. So there's the rear brake output. So that's going to go into that spot there, which goes to the rear lines. And this one goes to your front brakes. All right, I'm going to get them bent up. And hooked up, see how they go. 
Hey guys, I said I'd come back and uh, show you this Titan flaring tool. So there's the tool. It's for 3 16 line. And it came with a little bit of uh, dye lubricant. Got a little bit of grease there. And it came with uh, the stopper plug. And it came with this, uh, this flaring bit here. It has OP1 and it has an arrow, so that's Operation 1. And then you do that and then you flip it around and you do the other side and that gives you the double flare. Pretty simple. So check it out. So they say, I've already done it a bunch of times, you put this little guy in there, just finger tight, it only has a few threads on it, so you don't want to wrench it down tight with a big wrench. Tighten it finger tight. Get that open just a little bit so you can slide your line in there. And I've already cut this piece of line here and uh, cleaned out the inside a little bit. So you just insert that into that end until it just touches. has a little hole in there you can see it touch. So you just plunge that down until it's tight. Get your 10 millimeter wrench. Yeah, it's metric. Well, that's all right. Tighten these down evenly. Hold pressure inside that on that line so it stays down inside there. Tighten them up evenly. Usually tighten them till they creak just a little bit. You don't want to bust these. That one's nice and tight. Stopped out. And that one's tight. So then you take that back out so that gets tight. So you got to use a wrench to take it back out. Just a little light turn. So that comes right out. Set that aside. And put a little bit of that grease on that OP1, Operation 1. You see it with the arrow there. Operation 1. You don't want to get that mixed up. Get you a little bit of grease on there. You don't want too much. Just a little bit on there. Screw that baby in. Got the arrow pointing towards the tool. Finger threaded in there. Grab your, yep, 17 millimeter wrench. It's got a nice rubber grip on it. Titan's not sponsor me or anything. I just bought this tool from Speedway, so it looks like 40 bucks. Only by a sponsor's me is uh, me, myself, and I. <laughs> yeah, working man. So tighten that up until it just bottoms out nice and tight, cinches up. Grab it like so. Pop it loose. Unscrew it. And I got a rag here. I wiped the grease off of it. Make sure there's nothing on there. And make sure that end's clean. Wipe it down before you even start. Put a little bit of grease on that end. And now the Operation 1 arrow is facing away. So we're on the other end now. Screw that guy in there. Finger tight. Grab your wrench. Just don't get no simpler. It's almost idiot proof. Well, somebody might mess it up, but pretty simple. Tighten it up till it bottoms out. She's bottomed out. Grab that guy. Bust her loose. Unscrew that die. Set that off. Grab your 10 millimeter wrench. Loosen them up, finger loose, get them guys out of there, you want to take them all the way out, open that uh, cap, be gentle, get your rag, clean that off, look at that, gives you a perfect flare every time, just like the OEM. Yeah, it works pretty slick. When you go to put this on, if you're flaring both ends, don't forget to put it on your, uh, your flaring nut. That'll mess you up. You'll have to redo it. So this is about 20 inches I cut. 
So I'm going to put this from the master cylinder rear reservoir to the back on that proportioning valve. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Anybody could do it. Just like I said before, probably a kid could do it. Yeah, pretty cool. Get yourself one. They work great. All right, let's get back on it. Hey guys, well, I got these uh, brake lines to my master cylinder bent up and to the proportioning valve. Yeah, they came out pretty nice. I was thinking about maybe putting the, a clamp on here, but man, they're pretty sturdy. So they're kind of tucked away back in there. They look nice. So I got to set the ass into the car down and uh, so I can mock these front brake lines up here so I can turn this axle. Make sure my cables ain't going to interfere with anything. So, I'm going to do that as soon as I uh, cut this other fender well arch. Quarter panel arch. Yeah, check it out. I cut it. There's a chunk. Remember, guys, it was all cut before. It was like that when I cut the, got the car. But it's done pretty crappy. But yeah, check it out. Got the right radius. It's right to the max right to the bottom of my trim I'll have a little bit of panel left and in here I'll show you with this light it's right to the max there there's the rubber seal so I'll be able to push that in there and weld that up and seal that up right there I still had a couple little spot welds to do inside there but I wanted to get these done so it doesn't match exactly now my tire, but my rear end is hanging down. But man, look at that. That's the look right there. Tire sticking out a little bit. Yep, so when I uh, let it down on the rear end, because the rear end's just hanging right now, no jack stands underneath it, just on the frame, that rear end will pivot backwards and will fill that bigger gap. But yeah, that was uh, quite a chore cutting that nice and uh, round using the death wheel. Yep, wear, wear a face shield, some safety glasses, and some earplugs. But you can see how the tire is going to stick out a little bit, the pie crust. So, I'm going to probably cut that other side and let this baby down on the ground and the uh, see what them wheel arches look like i think they're going to be perfect once i set it down that rear end pivots back that shackle swings back should be just right on the money all right guys well we'll call this a video i'm gonna cut that other wheel arch set this baby down to the ground check them wheel arches out see what else i'm gonna do then i can jack that front end up and finish them front brake lines get them uh, braided ones mounted on the top of the frame and uh, pull that other header off over there one more time I'm sure it won't be the last time in this 55's life but they go on and off pretty easy so appreciate all you guys watching I really do guys alright we'll see you next time